All right, hey, Chipola Nation. We're here with Dr. Pam Rents, Vice President of Instructional Affairs at Chipola College. Good morning. And Pam, we are here to talk about uh, education in this crazy uh, corona pandemic world. Right. And I know you guys have been working like crazy to, uh, to get a schedule together for the fall. And um, we, we had to kind of make it through the spring semester and we've had some success mm -hmm. uh, doing, doing things in, in a different way over the summer. But now we've come up with several ways to offer classes in the fall. So let's just jump right okay. in and, and talk about what we're gonna try to do. Well, you know, in the spring, everybody had to just uh, make shift to remote instruction and they the faculty really did a great job doing that mm -hmm. um, we've tried to revise some things through the summer and looking at fall talking with faculty talking with the executive council um, the academic deans we've come up with several modalities that we hope will give students an option um, you know with whatever level of concern they have with returning to campus uh, in the fall and um, we certainly are looking at doing some things to uh, provide safety measures mm -hmm. as, as much as we can for students and staff. So in the fall, we'll reopen with um, students and faculty, all employees wearing masks. Um, some may have shields. We um, will be social distancing, so class sizes have been reduced. Um, and that's why some of the modalities are in place is because it allows us to serve the same number of students with the same number of faculty and the same number of classrooms without having to double all those things. Right. So we're, we're really looking at smaller class sizes uh -huh. and just looking at instructional delivery in a new way. Right. Um, and so uh, we'll be doing the traditional face-to-face -face courses, we'll be doing traditional online courses, uh -huh. we'll be doing courses through Zoom, and we'll be doing a combination of those things. Right. And so today, is, I guess we want to talk about those different modalities and how they'll serve the students right. when we start in the right. fall. Okay. Um, and, and again, the whole idea here is to, to give students the most options for if, if a student is worried, like I talked to a student the other day, in town and his mother's a travel nurse and she really wasn't jazzed about him coming onto campus. Right. And so he will be able to do all of his classes online or through Zoom and never come to campus. That's right. But That's there are choice, there yes. are classes like mine. I teach public speaking and, and it's just really hard to to do that uh, virtually. Right. So you, re Zoom. you really need to be and I think if you're taking, you know, Calc three or A and P lab, I think it's really difficult. To, to approximate that uh, virtually. So, right. so we do have the opportunity to, to come onto campus yes, and, there, and do some of those. There's just some of those courses that really students want that face-to-face -face instruction. And even for those who need that kind of instruction for something like Calc 3, uh -huh. um, we have courses that are paired. Um, an online course and a face-to-face -face course might mm -hmm. be paired and you'll have students sitting in both sections simultaneously. Right. And so um, we're really trying to look at all kind of different methods uh -huh. for serving students. Yeah, great, great. Okay, so um, classes are gonna be on campus with social distancing, limited meetings. They're gonna be online and live through Zoom. Let's talk about this. Students, it's really important that if a class has any kind of uh, virtual component, students need a good computer, they need very reliable internet, and in most cases, they're gonna need a webcam. Right. Um, and that was a, the real issue during spring. Um, it seems to not have been such a, a big issue during summer, but um, the reliable internet was uh -huh. a problem for students. And so we did open, we expanded the Wi-Fi in the library to extend to the parking lot mm -hmm. of um, the library and students were able to come to campus and access that Wi-Fi. And that'll still be available, but of course the computer labs on campus will also be available to uh -huh. students. Right. Um, but yes, reliable internet, um, a computer, and a lot of the things they can do through their phones, but there are some things that are just difficult to do through phones. Exactly. I'd hate to have to type an essay oh, on my, my gosh. phone. Oh my I know. But, um, but they can do a lot of things through the phone. Right, right. And then also um, to make sure that we, we uphold high academic standards, we're, most of the exams are gonna be proctored. Right. We had a real concern during spring and we worked on some things through summer about the integrity of exams 
um, being online mm -hmm. and, and students taking their exams in their bedrooms right. at home. And so we were, um, we upgraded our um, proctoring system to something called Honor Lock, and then we've upgraded that um, with uh, what we call a live monitor mm -hmm. uh, option, and that means that there's um, uh, a monitor who is, uh, that will, if there's any kind of irregularities taking place with that exam, then it will pop in and let the student know that you can't go any further until you resolve this or this, and that right. other person needs to leave the room or right. whatever. So we, we really are taking measures to try to, to maintain the integrity right. of the exams and the coursework for the students. So there will be proctored exams, which is why they need reliable internet and um, a webcam mm -hmm. and those kind of things to be right. able to do that proctored component of the virtual or remote instruction. Right, all right, good. Okay, uh, so let's talk about the, the first kind, and, and the, this one's easy, traditional face-to-face. -face. That, right. That's just a regular class. That's right. You're going to come to class like you always have. Mm -hmm. um, and our concern with all these modalities is when students start to register online, that they understand what these modalities are and how to recognize those. Mm -hmm. So if you're registering for a face-to-face -face course, you're looking for a section number that would begin with zero, whatever, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, two, zero, one, zero, but those are your traditional face-to-face -face courses that you would come to campus and meet with your instructor in the classroom. Right, so it would be English 1102, section 001. That's right. Okay, all right. Okay. So the next one is the online which we've always offered well we've right. we've offered online for as long as the internet's been that's around. right that's and, right and that is just that's a course that is on canvas and what else about it that? is traditional online there you don't have to come to campus there's no campus requirements there is the proctored um testing uh requirement which is why you would have to have that webcam mm -hmm. and the internet and the right. computer. But there's no but Zoom there's and there's no, no there's no logging in at, at a particular time. No, it is strictly um, do the assignments as the uh, instructor has set those deadlines for them to be completed. And, and you can recognize that when you register by knowing that it has a 700 section. So it would be in ENC 1101 700 okay. or 701 or 702. But if it begins with a seven, it is a traditional online course. Okay, great. Next, next is online synchronous, which is designated with an 800. And tell us how that works. An online synchronous course is, it's, um, it would be done through Zoom. It would be students meeting with an instructor on a certain day, a certain time, and getting the instruction through Zoom that they would normally get mm -hmm. in a classroom. Um, and so a synchronous just means that you're meeting with your teacher at a certain day and time. Right, and that's the way I'm teaching my public speaking course this summer. Wednesday at 5.30, everyone logs into a Zoom meeting I'm looking at them, they're looking at me, mm -hmm. and then when people give speeches, we spotlight them and all. And, and so it's, it's actually happening at a particular time. That's right. It's, it's live, um, and it does require signing in. Um, right. And when you register, you're registering for a certain day and certain time. Right. And you'll see that in the, um, in the schedule. It will, it will say um, synchronous online it'll say zoom uh -huh. um, so students will know when they see that that it does require right a certain day certain time for you to be available for it, that and course. so you need to know that if you have if you have a job and you you're expected to work a shift on wednesday night at 5 30 you don't need to sign up for that class that's at right. that time that's you, right you need to make sure that you're available that's right okay. so it that's... is um and it is designated with that 800 so if you see a course that begins with an eight you know that it's online synchronous and you have to be available at a certain day and a certain time. Okay. Modified face-to-face -face synchronous. Uh, we didn't talk about that, did we? No. Okay, mm -hmm. we jumped that one. So, so asynchronous is when it's, it's they're coming to class one day, they're working online the next. Right. Okay. And some students will be coming to class on Monday, online Wednesday. The other half of those students in the same class would be working online Monday and coming to class on Wednesday. So there's really two sections. Uh -huh. and, and Of the same class, but right. the idea is to have less people in the room 
for social distancing. Right. And you come to campus less, right. which limits exposure. Right. So students who want to come to campus and be part of that face-to-face -face instruction have that option. Right. But they don't have to come both days. Okay. All right. Okay? So, and and so that the, really helps us with the number of classrooms we need, the uh -huh. number of instructors we need, and we can still maintain the same number of students that we're providing instruction right, to. Right, right. So the modified face-to-face -face synchronous um, is you come to class one day face-to-face, -face, right. and the next day you're on Zoom at the designated time to, to log in. That's to, right. Okay. On Monday you come to class at 7.30 on campus with mm -hmm. your instructor. On Wednesday at 7.30, you're logging into Zoom and you're participating in that class with your instructor and the other half of the students through Zoom. Okay. And so um, you still have 24 students in the class, half are on Zoom, half are in the classroom, but everybody still is working together in that classroom. Right, okay. So um, students do have to be, uh, pay attention to days and times. Right. So when they so, sign up. So the modified face-to-face -face synchronous uh, is designated by an M01. So that means if you sign up for the M01, you're coming to campus on Monday at, at the particular time. That's right. And then Wednesday you would be logging in mm -hmm. to and, Zoom. And on the schedule, students can see that. It'll okay. say Monday, um, 7.30, uh, Z109. Okay. And then on, it'll have a W for Wednesday and it'll say um, uh, um, Zoom okay. online. Okay. All right. okay. All right. So if your section number begins with a letter uh -huh. instead of a number, right. then you're looking at Monday. Uh, if it's T01, it's Tuesday. W01 is Wednesday, and R01 is it's Thursday. Thursday. Okay. So a letter designates that that's the day that your body will be in a chair, right. in a room, in front of an instructor. Okay. All right. Great. Um, so that's um, so we have modified face-to-face -face synchronous. We have modified face-to-face -face asynchronous, and um, I think that's I think that's everything. I, um, I think so. Um, and again, we have those paired classes. There are some online classes that are paired with face-to-face, -face, and students don't really need to know that. When right. they register, it would just happen yeah. by the nature of those right, courses right. being paired. And our, our counselors are doing a great job. Our advisors, uh, you can call them. You can schedule an appointment with them. Um, you can also, if you meet the qualifications, you can register online right. but but we are here and we are ready to help students absolutely navigate this and understand right. this we, um, we are very aware that this is confusing uh, we have had long um, in-depth discussions trying to for us to wrap our heads around all these modalities and trying to serve students so we certainly understand that it can be confusing and we do have excellent advisors who are ready to to help students understand the process, understand what they're registering for. And if students are registering online and they're a little confused, they can always just call and, and get um, some advice from an advisor. Right. So Let's talk about early fall registration. Um, we've moved things a little bit because y'all were busy trying to get this schedule right. put together. Right. It was, um, it, it has been a challenge just to try to get this to work in our um, Genzabar system. And so uh, with IT, we've been working on that mm -hmm. and we've got that worked out. So yeah, we had to look at pushing registration back a little bit because we wanted to make sure we had everything cleaned up and clear right. before we proceeded and, and had everybody more confused than they might be already. So, so yes, we pushed registration back. Um, there's some registration happening this week, uh -huh. uh, honors registration, but next week um, on the 13th begins regular registration for students. And um, we're really excited to just kind of see where the interest lies right. In, right. with all these different modalities. Right. And July 13th is for current students, which a current student is someone who was enrolled at least in the spring semester. You don't have, you didn't have to be a summer student, right. but, but you had to have been enrolled in the spring to still be considered current. Right. Um, and then the, the following week on the 20th is early registration for new students. Right. And a new student is, that's a little, that's a moving target because <laughs> you have to have your application in, you have to have your transcripts in, and you have to be cleared and, and accepted to, right. the, to the college. Right. So, And then there are some programs that you have to be accepted into the program. For example, the nursing uh -huh. program and um, uh, the school of education and right. those kind of things. And so uh, 
those departments will be handling registration for those students. Right. So. Okay. All right. Well, Pam, I think we've done um, some some good explaining here. I uh, hope so. I hope we have. Um, and again, we encourage students to call and get clarification on anything that might still be confusing for right. them. Right. Okay. Well, let's come back later and and talk about some some other topics. But I think I think y'all have done a great job with with uh, coming up with different delivery methods for the fall and and we look forward to seeing a whole lot of students uh, summer enrollment was was just the same as the summer before yes, so apparently we were, we were thrilled that uh, summer enrollment actually was a little higher than it was last summer we we um, felt that was a real victory right. and um, we we're hoping that with all the different modalities we will see that students um, you know there's a uh, something for everyone we hope right and um, we hope that enrollment will will maintain so um, Great. So, yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Pam. We'll Thank talk to you, you later.